team, it's your boy D Neil back with another reaction video, guys. Here we are with Australia on Fire full documentary. Before we dive into this, make sure you subscribe to the channel, ring notification bell, get a video a thumbs up so it gets suggested. You guys got a favorite video suggestion? You can subscribe to Patreon or drop it in the comment section. What do we get? Charred bodies. Come on. Are you ready for another piece? Come on. Yeah. Birds with singed feathers, burnt feet. Sea eagle I had last week came in with badly burnt feet. We have a little baby, little baby wattle bird. Obviously there's not enough food out there, again, because of the drought and the fire situation. Dead grass, no leaves, no fruit on trees. Come on, Ash. Come on. Come on, get a bit warm outside. Wombats are um, a lucky animal. They don't have a lot of impact as the fire's going over, but it's when they come out after the fire that the ground's all burnt and there's no food. The mother goes onto the side of the road um, looking for food and they're hit and then the babies are left in the, in the burrow at, at this stage and nobody comes back to get them and then after a couple of days the baby goes looking for mum. Oh wow! It'll never recover in my lifetime. Never. Be lucky to recover in my grandkids' lifetime. Oh my God. I think it is quite possible that there will be some species that face imminent extinction as a consequence of these fires. And I guess we'll, we'll only be able to find out what the effects of the fires have been when we get the chance to get back in and, and look at uh, whether there are survivors. That is insane. Salvage anything out of this. There's so much work just going up with flames. If there's an average of 50 to 60,000 bees per, per hive, it's a lot of bees that just went up in flames here. Wow. I just didn't want to face it. I'm going to have to just clean up what's left. There's nothing that I can retain to use again hardly except for the straps, the M locks. Oh, I haven't extracted any honey this season. So that's my income is sort of zero. They need the flowers, they need, they need the pollen and the nectar. That's what they survive and that's what they feed their young baby bees. Uh, so if they're not getting those, they're not breeding up and they'll just die out. It's crazy because you don't, I feel like I don't think about like bees and things like that. And it's like, just, just what these fires do to like the entire ecosystem like is, is absolutely insane. Uh, not to mention, I mean, what they do to people is devastating. But you, you start thinking about all the different insects and animals that it affects, and it's it's insane to think about. It's just very disheartening. Um, the distressing calls from the animals straight out was very unnerving. Uh, noises I have never ever heard in the bush, and I've been in the bush for over 40 years.
we've lost about 90 to 95 per cent of our floral resources in the forests. Uh, it leaves us with our area that we cover, only approximately 5% left that we can go. And that's really hard because the floral resources are very, very limited. They're my babies. Um, that, that's the worst part of it. I, I put, I'm very passionate about my bees. When some of our bees have been moved three to four times in one week, we're losing bees, not to fire now, to actually moving them to save them. Do they not sting? Like, I feel like usually you see people in like the bee suits, like before they do all this stuff. And my guy just like bare hands, and short sleeve shirts. And I'm just, I'm sitting here wondering, does he not get stung? I don't know what it'll mean. It's, it's going to be a long road then. It's going to be a long road. We've got to go maybe interstate, um, maybe further west. Um, the costs are going to be astronomical. Oh my God. Wow. That's crazy. Oh my Lord. It's going to have a huge impact on honey production. I can't see any honey being produced here locally now. That's no good to me. I haven't got any honey to sell and I won't have any until at least New Year, if, if I'm lucky. Wow. Uh... Almonds are an example of a highly dependent crop and um, here at this farm raspberries and blueberries depend on honeybees and stingless bees to transfer pollen to get good fruit set. Each flower needs several visits um, by a pollinator so if we have um, fewer pollinators then it could compromise the quality and quantity of fruit. That's crazy to just how it affects everything you don't i feel like i i never think about longer term we need to think about floral resources and planting more trees in the landscape planting more shrubs and um, herbs and that's something that i think yeah we need to have policies with government help It's uh, not a good outlook. Not a good outlook at all. We really, really need rain. Um, <laughs> that's the only thing that's going to save a lot of things. Wow. Kangaroo Island. Oh my God. This thing was a monster. It was extremely wide, very powerful. My Lord. Lord. Uh, like, yeah, locomotives, I think now that I was quite fortunate to survive it. So slate does burn. Good pull table. Good pull table, that one. Sheesh. place was just obliterated everything everything was burnt sticks trees everything just wiped out there was nothing could stop this um, this firestorm at all that's well my it. income is, has gone that's for sure wow because David and have lost 
the absolute devastation, the loss, it's, you can't even comprehend it, it's surreal. Why are you hear so many people talk about like like these fires like destroyed their their income their way of life like not only did they burn down like everything they own their houses and everything but now these people can't make money and it's like it, it it's just crazy to watch and it's it's honestly devastating to watch everybody everybody that we can we're helping all the families that are directly affected by the bushfires people have lost their jobs people have lost their livelihood people has lost what gives them their identity in their mind so it's long-term impact to the island that's not going to come to light for quite a long time <laughs> We've lost our home and the devastation is horrific, um, but there is life there still. I saw some kangaroos in the background and I went to go near them and they hopped off, they weren't injured. Wow. I'm holding on to the fact that there is life and we're gonna grab as much as we can. Last few days have been just really terrible. It's already chaotic enough having three toddlers, well, two toddlers and a baby, and yeah, we've just yeah. constantly been like packing and on edge, like I haven't slept in days, and I'm just always afraid, like always just looking out my window thinking like, is a fire gonna come, you know, attack my house and my kids? I'm not meant to be lifting anything heavier than my baby and um, hauling things into my car and out of my car and driving around in the middle of the night evacuating um, and then you know you think it's okay wow. so you go home and you unpack your whole car and then you, you find out a couple of days later you've got to evacuate again. Thanks. Wow. Yeah I can't I can't fathom it. virtually all of the sanctuary, so that's um, over 2,000 hectares, um, but it really devastated uh, the koala habitat. We're really, really thankful. helping us out uh, in this really devastating time. The first wave died in the fire. The second wave, uh, which we're dealing with now, were either injured in the fire or uh, struggling to uh, find sufficient food um, to live un until the rainy season comes. It's always hard to see. Uh, All right, man, I just absolutely love the community with them. Uh, dude, Australia's people are resilient, and uh, it's absolute community. It's absolute help your neighbor. It's, uh, and you can't ask for more than that in difficult situations like this. But that's all we got for part three. Uh, you guys got a favorite video suggestion? You can subscribe to Patreon and drop it in the comment section. Subscribe to the channel, ring notification bell, give the video a thumbs up so it gets suggested. It's your boy Dina. Out.